creative friends. My name is Joey Balistrieri. Welcome to my channel. I am so excited. I am a member of the Dollar Beat Club. If you're not familiar with that, it's like a price club. If you're in America, then you understand that concept because we have things like Sam's and Costco. Well, this is the same thing. In order to shop the website, you have to be a member and you can be a member by subscribing to one of their two subscriptions or both, which I get both, or you can pay an annual fee and then you can shop the website as much as you want and everything on the website is a dollar. But all that being said, I want to dive right in because when I opened this month's box, I literally squealed with delight. So I have here the dollar bead bag and the dollar bead club and look at the color palette this month. Oh my goodness, I am so excited. This is the happiest colors in Joey land. I absolutely love the curation that they have done this month. It just makes my heart sing. Oh my goodness. And you might know I've already designed a piece just in setting up my mat to share the contents of these two subscriptions. I already designed my first piece. So I'll do that as soon as I'm finished unboxing. I'll jump right into a quick project. So the dollar bead bag is only $8 a month. It's so amazing. And if you subscribe to that, then you can go back and buy any of the strands for a dollar uh, and as many as you want on the website and other things too and they have fabulous check glass buttons so that's this first little collection here the second subscription is the dollar bead box and with that subscription we get like some metal findings we get some strands and then we get like some extra items and it's always so good now this was one of the first um, subscription companies that I signed up for many many years ago I don't even remember when and back then it wasn't curated it was just a sampler well now it's a curated sampler so as you can see everything goes together so let's dive right in to the dollar bead bag contents for the month of September um, you get four uh, three millimeter strands and four four millimeter strands every month and let's just go through them quickly so our first three millimeter strand is a light amethyst it is almost like the palest palest lavender it's so pretty and it has so much sparkle for such a small bead and then the next three millimeter strand is called jet matte pink so in check glass you know they layer the finishes and sometimes you can't even see the base color when they put the other finishes so um, you know there, this has probably a black base which is why jet is in the name but it gives it that really rich berry tone and then the next three millimeter strand we would either have received a crystal ruby gold luster or it would be a crystal purple luster I've gotten tangled up here and I believe that I got the crystal ruby gold luster and I know that it, this is a small bead but can you see the gold flashes I believe this is the one with the gold luster and I just love it that to me these dark berry colors these rich pinks with gold and copper washed on top is just absolute bead perfection I just love it and then the last three millimeter strand is called violet fuchsia look how gorgeous that is there it goes from some areas where it's a bit crystal clear and you can see through it to the deepest raspberry pink so pretty and then in the four millimeter strands we would have received either the violet fuchsia or a matte violet fuchsia and clearly I got the violet fuchsia which I love I love getting the same bead in two different sizes that is just amazing for design possibilities it just makes me so happy so I love that I got the the three and the four millimeter in that color and then our next four millimeter strand we would either receive a deep rose luster or a raspberry copper now i'm assuming that i got the deep rose luster because there is no copper on this this has a silver wash can you see the flashes of silver i would love to see the copper washed on this pink but the silver makes it just glisten it's so pretty and then our next one is uh, just a staple in your bead wardrobe <laughs> honestly just an opaque white just alabaster white so beautiful 
I mean, oh my goodness, I could have 50 strands of this and just hoard them. So wonderful for designing. And then this is probably my favorite strand in the whole bag. This is the absolute most perfect pink color. It is simply opaque pink, but I absolutely love this bead. So beautiful. I would love to have this in six millimeter, eight millimeter. Oh my goodness, I love that so much. And so that is our dollar bead bag for the month of September. You get eight strands for $8. There's always four three millimeter and four four millimeter, and I highly recommend this. I mean, it's just absolutely amazing. And as I said, it used to not be curated, but now it is. And so now you get eight strands that you could actually just all work together. And I just wanna show you something really quickly. Last month's dollar bead bag was a different color palette of course but i did um, just literally strung the curated strands and i did this beautiful beautiful necklace with those strands dotted it with gold added some of my own little end caps and i have this multi-strand necklace that goes into a gold chain if you did not see this video i'll put it in the description box a link so you can tap and go right there but this has already worked out for you with these strands and so you know even this could be a gorgeous bracelet i turned it into a necklace but you can do so much with these strands you can also if you're a bead weaver these are amazing you can also cut them apart and instead of seed beads you have these fabulous spacer beads because of the size of them so I I highly recommend the dollar bead bag if you don't do anything else and then you know you can go on the website because you're then a member and you can get whatever you want for a dollar and it's just a really sweet fun little website okay enough said let's dive right into our dollar bead box for the month so this is the contents of the box and there's the findings and um, we're gonna start out with the strands. And the first strand is a 12 by 17 millimeter check glass art deco oval. And it's white with a pink wash. I absolutely love this bead. I love this oval shape. So beautiful. And like with that, look at this, you guys. You could take two of these for a pair of earrings and then use these as your focal for a bracelet and you have a jewelry set immediately. And then this is also one of my favorite. I had a, I have a lot of favorites in this box because this is my favorite color story of all time. This is absolutely stunning. This is a three by five millimeter glass gem cut rondelle and it's in an amethyst color. I love a rondelle bead and I can promise you these are gonna go into my first project. I absolutely love this. It is just so pretty and there are 25 beads on here so it's a small bead so it doesn't look like much but there is a lot to work with here and another favorite for me in this box is a four millimeter check glass cube there are 35 pieces here and you will either receive a matte crystal or a light amethyst and clearly i got the light amethyst it's so wonderful and this has that picasso wash that's a little hard to describe but it has like that dappling of another color on top of the bead so for a little four millimeter cube it's like a little work of art it just has so much going on on the finish and then this is another favorite i love pinch beads these are three by five millimeter check glass pinch beads and we would either receive a matte crystal or a light amethyst and it looks like i got the light amethyst this is just the coolest shape it looks almost like a little piece of wild rice or something i just love that and then this is wonderful a four millimeter check glass druck a druck is just a smooth round and i got the light amethyst and you guys 48 pieces just amazing and like if i want more of these I can go on the website for a dollar and get another strand. So just so great. I love this color. Absolutely love it. And then I can't even believe this. I just love this. This is a 10 millimeter check glass sunset flower and it's in dark pink. And we got 18 pieces. So an entire strand of this beautiful check glass flower. It is so dimensional and there is so much detail. Can you see all the little like design on each of the petals in the center of the flower and what a color what a color oh my goodness it's like raspberry soda or something i don't know it's so wonderful 
Okay, and then we have all of these additional items. So this is a really, um, a really common check glass bead. It's called a button bead, and it's white with a pink wash. So it looks like a button, but the drill hole actually goes right through the center of it. That is a really cool bead. And then this is another favorite of mine. Oh my goodness. These are 11 millimeter and they are square floral beads. And so you would either get the white with pink or crystal with pink. And clearly I got the crystal with the pink. So let me get a piece of wire here just so I can get my fingers out of the way and kind of let you see how the light goes through the crystal. Isn't it gorgeous? I absolutely love that. I love a crystal bead where you can kind of see your stringing material going through. I don't know why that intrigues me so, but it's like a little window into the wire and then you have that beautiful finish on it. I love those. That's another favorite of mine in the box. And then these are, the next ones up are absolutely the cutest beads. These are check glass squishy saucer beads in an amethyst color. They are only five by seven millimeter, but we got, um, we got 12, uh, no, wait, 12 pieces. Looks like there's more than that here. And it also looks like I have a piece of wire that's too, oh no, I got it. I thought the wire was too thick to go through the bead. I'm a little bit excited if you can't tell. I just love this box and bag so much. But look at this gorgeous little bead. Oh my, that is stunning. I just love the shape. And you know, like with check glass, each shape is just perfect. I mean, there's not like imperfections or variations. It's absolutely perfect. What a gorgeous bead. Squishy saucer, I love that. <laughs> And then this is another favorite. I mean, who doesn't love a, um, a melon bead? So this is a check glass melon bead and it has a silver wash. And let me just check uh, the, the insert here because it looks like on this one that you will either receive the pink with silver or raspberry with copper. And I got the pink with the silver in mind. I bet the raspberry with the copper wash is also stunning. But I love that um, it's almost like a splatter painting with where silver metallic paint doing the splatters. So beautiful. And this is an eight millimeter bead. And it looks like we got six pieces of that. And then this is a check glass star bead. And look at this color, you guys. I have a piece of wire that has like a kink in it. So it doesn't want to go through my beads. I love this bead bead look at this gorgeous star embossed on both sides it's a coin shaped bead and I just love I love a two-sided bead because if you make a charm or a dangle out of this no matter which way it moves on your piece it's beautiful on both sides I just love that and there were two of them in the box so you know at first thought earrings beautiful little pair of earrings. You could do a collection of earrings to go with your pieces with this box and just interchange them. And then this is a stunning bead, 16 by 21 millimeter. So this is nice and large. I might have a blocked hole a little bit. Um, this is nice and large for, you could make a pendant for a necklace with this. This would be fabulous as your focal for a bracelet, uh, even a bookmark even to have your little drop on a bookmark so that when you're reading or doing a puzzle book, um, you know, you could really look at this, like see all the detail. It is so wonderful. Um, this is a white with a pink wash and it's, I just love it. I just love it. Look at the dimension. It's so beautiful. It's like that, that cameo shape, but a flower embossed instead of a little girl so beautiful oh my goodness i don't want to put it down i love 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 it and then um what is up next oh this is always nice to have we got five millimeter check fire polish beads in crystal again look how gorgeous it is to see your stringing material especially if it's metallic right through the crystal. I just love that. And I love a five millimeter bead. It's just, you know, you get so used to working with the four, six, eight, like that. And the five is like a really sweet size. It's so beautiful. I love that. I just uploaded a video yesterday that is a crystal elegant project. And then this came in the box. So, oh my, like I say, this box just 
speaks to my heart. And this is another, I don't know, maybe my favorite. If you've listened to me for like five seconds or longer, or been on my channel, you know that I have a little bit of an obsession with check glass flowers. I have an entire organizing bin that is overly stuffed. When I de-stash beads, I can't bring myself to de-stash check glass flowers. They are just amazing. This is a 14 millimeter hibiscus flower, and it's that same white with pink, but I mean, there is so much dimension. There's like the the crystallized pink here, the opaque, the opaque white, and then the wash on top of that. And this is, I don't know if you can see, but this has this concave inversion on both sides. It's two-sided, but the coloring is different on two sides and different from bead to bead. Like these flowers, the, the it's artwork. You're just, it's just artwork. Each one is so beautiful, so dimensional, so detailed for a tiny piece of glass that's the size of the tip of my finger. I, I just love these. I don't know what I'm going to do with these, but I'm thinking I might need a pair of earrings out of those. Just, um, I, but I do, I have to say, I do tend, when I love a bead, I do tend to think about bracelet design so that I can see it and enjoy the artistry of the glass. Um, you know, that's kind of the thing in jewelry is when we make earrings and necklaces, we're embellishing ourselves for other people that are looking at our appearance. But when you make a bracelet or a ring, you're able to see the piece and really enjoy the beads and the artistry. So when I love something as much as I love this, I do kind of think, oh, I want a bracelet out of that. <laughs> And then this is another um, like squishy saucer bead in amethyst. And um, oh, you know what? I think I reversed these two because they're both squishy saucers. Um, this one is the 25 pieces, the check glass saucer bead, this little small one. I just realized looking at the ingredient list. And this one is that squishy, um, it's so cute. They're call, they call this a squishy saucer bead. And so we got 12 pieces of this and 25 pieces of this, and I think I reversed them. They're both in the amethyst color, and I just love that shape. It does look like a little flying saucer from the, you know, the 1960s version of what a flying saucer would look like. It's just so cute. I love it. And then we got these in either last month or the month before, and I think this is amazing. This is a glass pearl, but it is done it's to look like a Baroque pearl. You know how those Baroque pearls are just kind of misshapen and bumpy and irregular, and they come out of nature like that. And this is glass, but it's made to have that look. So that if you look at them, you can tell that they're glass because the bumpiness and irregularity is the same on every bead. <laughs> it's not so irregular, but it gives you that look and it's a check glass pearl. And it's like the finish is amazing. It is so lustrous and just beautiful. And we got 12 pieces of that. And then our metal findings in the dollar bead box this month are this beautiful knot pendant in a, um, I think this was antique silver. Let me find it. I've jumped around a little bit. Yes, it's an antique silver finish, but it's a pewter knot charm absolutely beautiful and you know again this is a 24 by 19 millimeter so if you wanted a more petite necklace this could be your focal drop you know like anything you could choose anything you could have it hanging from the flower and just really make a statement but this is a really sweet size because look at the scale of it with a bracelet if you wanted to have it as kind of a coin shaped charm hanging from a bracelet just absolutely beautiful and it is like you know it just looks like a um, knotting technique to me <laughs> absolutely beautiful i love that and then it's so funny because last month i think another company put these pewter leaves in our box and so i and i used them and now i have another pair uh, i made earrings out of these last month but these are so detailed these little pewter leaves they have all the veining of a leaf both sides are different really dimensional like it's not flat i don't know if you can see the profile on it but just a wonderful little charm and again you could do earrings you could also separate them and do a charm on a bracelet and then i love 
to add a little charm or a dangle to the back of a necklace where my closure is just you know if i wear my hair up there's a detail on the back of my piece as well so i think of that they're the perfect size for that so this is our dollar bead bag and dollar bead box for the month of september it's absolutely delicious i'm so excited i am going to clean up my mat and jump right into my first project I know I was supposed to clean up my mat before I started making, but these beads are so gorgeous and they are so me that I just like wanted to keep looking at them while I was working. So I have done a largely a connecting project. Look at this earring, you guys, <laughs> isn't it so fun? It's like a little ladder of all the different beads just kind of featuring them. And I did a little dangle and it's pretty simple. I did pull a few things from my stash, so I'll tell you what they are. And I've made all the components for the second earring except for one, because I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. In this project, it's really important Important that all of your loops be the same size and that your wire is straight all the loops are going in the same direction because if you don't do that when you start to connect all of this because there is a lot of connecting uh, you'll have trouble so um, I'll show you a few little tricks for doing that and something you might not know about check glass beads I got my caliper out and I, I this is a um, lavender silk glass finish bead from my stash I literally had four of these left in my stash but I put it in the caliper because I needed a six millimeter bead um, and something you I started to say that you might not know about check glass I, I just wanted to show you this is in fact a six millimeter bead and so something you might not know about the check glass faceted rounds is that a six millimeter bead lined up next to each other is exactly the same as two of them is exactly the same as four uh, four millimeter beads with three in a row or going down to three millimeter beads it would take four of them so you can get like this pretty parallel design which I love the geometry of this I kind of use different configurations of this design in a lot of my jewelry projects but so you can see two six millimeters is the same length as three four millimeters is the same length as four three millimeter check glass rounds so when you are designing keep that in mind because it will save you a lot of trouble when you're trying to get patterns that are different but have the same length in a geometric sort of a design so I hope that makes sense so I'm going to show you exactly what I did for this little um, component they are all exactly the same and if you notice, I am mixing gold and copper. I love those two warm metals. I love the brightness of the gold contrasting the copper. And this whole thing is an alternation of those finishes. So my longer downward rods are in gold wire. And then my chain is in copper. And then my horizontal components are on the copper wire. I used 20 gauge wire for everything except this little drop. I used a splayed head pin that I just had in my stash. I just think these are so cute. Um, so that's going to be for that. And so I used my one and a half millimeter one step looper. It's the smallest of the three sizes that this tool comes in. And for me, this saves my hand from pain from all the twisting when I'm repeating so many components, but also when I really need all the loops to really be consistently the same size, for a perfect finish this tool does it because this little mandrel is it's going to consistently do that same exact loop i've already put the two loops in the one end of my downward rod for the second earring and i have a little piece of copper wire here and i'm going to show you exactly how to do this if you've been on my channel and you're following me you've seen this a thousand times so please indulge the newer people that don't know because i will say you can totally make your simple loops with your pliers i am not consistent with my sizing when i do them by hand with you know pliers if you are 
you know, or if you don't have this tool, you can totally do this that way. But for me, this is just easier. So when you start out and there's no beads on your wire, you don't need to push the wire all the way through the guide hole in the back of the tool because it cuts right here. So you would just be wasting like half an inch of wire. So as long as your wire is in the tool just past that back jaw, you will be fine because it makes a blunt, fresh, clean cut on your wire. So you can skip that step with your cutters that we normally do when we start wire working. And if you can tell, I am just gently closing it only to put pressure so I can make sure my wire is underneath the mandrel and back against here. And then I just gently close the tool and I can watch it make that cut Oops, my wire just flipped a little bit. I can watch it make that cut and I can watch it wrap the wire around the mandrel and then I can see that my wire is going up this way so my loop is not centered on the wire. So I'm just gonna pull the wire down so that I'm looking at the center and it's centered. And then when I take the tool away, you know, my wire got a little wonky inside so that happens sometimes with the tool but I'm just gonna come in with my pliers, close it really well, and open and close my pliers to work harden, and that loop is done. And now I'm going to, you know, it's the same as every other component. Like, look at this. They're, they're, they are the same. Absolutely perfect. So I really love that. I had these in order so that I don't <laughs> string them wrong. There we go. And so I'm going to put these two six millimeter faceted check glass rounds and as I said these are from my stash because we did not get a six millimeter bead in the box and for this design to graduate down but keep my components the same length I had to go shopping in my stash for a six millimeter bead and um, I do want all of my loops in this project to be going in the same direction so that means it's going up and the opening is at the top and if you're using the one step looper it always makes the loops going upward so I want to hold this so that these loops are going to be exactly the same and this is just a detail but when you are stringing this on I have it so that if you look at this earring so it is seamless. The opening to the loops are all on the back side, the way that I strung it. So I want to do the same thing on my second earring. So again, I am putting my wire under that mandrel, this time through the guide hole in the back. I'm gently closing it so that I can check right here and make sure as I'm closing that I am not breaking a bead or damaging it. If, you're, if it's too tight and you make this loop, you can even push so hard that you damage the loop on the other end. So I see people like popping this tool. I don't know why you would do that. You have no control when you do that. So I just go slowly. I am watching the tool and watching my beads. It made a nice clean cut for me. And then as I'm watching the loop, I can see that I am not putting any pressure on my beads. And I'm gonna pull that down the same that I did on the other end. And I am now centering this loop with this loop. And if I feel like I need to straighten anything, this one's pretty perfect, but if I feel like I do, while I'm holding it and while I have this control, I can straighten it out. And when I remove the tool, I have another perfect loop, absolutely perfect. <laughs> so this one does not need to be closed, but I do like to kind of, I fuss with my jewelry. I like to put my pliers to everything and just work hard in it. So this is ready for stringing. And so also on this, I will say like, obviously this is a lot more wire than I need for the piece, but you actually need this wire so that you don't struggle when you're stringing this, these two horizontal lines. It gives you a little bit of space to get things on and off without everything dropping off. So um, the other thing that you'll see here, let me just pull it up to the camera. These little seed beads are just from my stash. It's an 11-0 seed bead in just a pretty pink. Um, I don't even know what it is because it was just something I had left over. So I'm gonna dump some of those out here because that is the spacers in between the components. Let me just make a little pile here. And um, I'll talk to you about these pieces 
as we go, uh, as I get to it. So I'm just going to start copying the exact same thing that I did here. I'm going to start with one seed bead and I'm gonna pick up my first component and I wanna make sure that I, I know my direction. So um, I'm gonna put it so that that opening, whoops, that is the wrong end of the component, so that that opening is going to the back and then I'm gonna continue like that with two seed beads in between. I did one at the top of the pattern and then two in between and then same thing, make sure that opening is going toward the back and I'm gonna do this all the way down the design in the same order that I did the first pair of earrings. I mean the first earring. <laughs> I'm excited. I love this so much. It turned out so beautifully. And as you have heard me say a million times, I mean, I just squealed with delight with this box. It's so, they always do a good job. Last month's box I thought was so serene and so tranquil and it just was so inspiring. Um, I did a lot with last month's box, but this month's box, just um, box and bag, just delightful. <laughs> Come on, little seed beads. Okay, just all the way down. Two more seed beads. And component and one seed bead. Okay, so this side is strong. And now I'm going to come back in with my one step looper and same thing. I want to make sure the loop is going in the same direction. So I have it so the loop is going up, you can see, and I'm going to put that wire under the mandrel through the guide hole and just, you know, let those components get out of your way. Maintain control, just gently close. So obviously I need to readjust before I, so I just make my final loop. pause here and just tell you, because I did have to redo one of my components. It's very easy to make this loop too tight because do you see how you can push the seed beads and the components really tight together. But when you do that, they don't sit nicely next to each other. So you wanna make sure before you make this loop that these have the space that they need, that you're not crunching this down together. So I that's another reason why I just gently close it and let the tool assist me in seeing where I'm at before I make the loop. So um, now I'm just going to close it gently. And this is super easy. Just turn, just close it and pull it down. And I can see that my wire got a little um, sideways in there, but I can fix that with my pliers. And now when I take the tool away, I have a really nice component. The, sometimes with the one-step looper, if your wire goes in, gets a little sideways in the tool, you'll have to um, kind of tidy up your loop after. And for some reason, this one even didn't cut properly. I mean, I've had to make a a little adjustment to a couple of my <laughs> a couple of my loops on this project, but that's okay. It's still it's the tool still gives me really consistent loops. I do want this closed really well and I work hard in the same as I have. And on the on my first earring, when I was all done with this connecting puzzle, I did go back and just, you know, put my pliers to all of those loops and make sure everything was going in the right direction. And so now I'm going to repeat the exact same thing with the stringing on this side. One seed bead go down through my my first component and then two seed beads. I found it was a little bit faster to leave it laying on the mat and you know pick up that next loop of the next component, two seed beads, and I'm just gonna get to the end of the earring. Okay, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing on this side. Just make sure that loop is going up and make sure everything is lined up. Put my wire through the guide hole 
and just gently close the tool, make sure everything's hanging nicely, and close, get my, get my beads out of the way, and just pull that down, and I can see that I got a really good component. And again, because I have so much strung on here, I do have to kind of tidy up this loop a little bit, but it gives me a chance to work hard in it. And so that part of my earring is done. <coughs> and now for your chain attachments, you will need seven links, or you could do more, but an odd number of links at the bottom of the earring and three links, again, an odd number at the top of the earring. And I love the chain that I have because this chain has links that are openable. Is that a word, openable? <laughs> but they're not solid links. So um, as small as they are, I can open it and do for an attachment, uh, for, for an attaching project, I had the wrong side, for an attaching project, um, this makes things really easy, especially when I have, you know, this complicated kind of a connection here. I can just open the links and add them in. And I'm going to get this third one. I'm just starting at the top of the earring design and working my way down to the bottom. Love that. And now for the top part of my earring, I'm gonna use one of my diamond cut gold filled jump rings. I love these jump rings. They are really thick and sturdy, but because of the diamond cutting and how well they're made, like it's really difficult to see where they open and close. And if you close them well, it just looks seamless. So I'm just gonna pick up my chain on both sides and close that really well. That looks amazing and I can go ahead and add it to my ear wire even though I still have some things to work on on the bottom of the earring design. Whoops, I don't have this open far enough. And I do, when I attach it to the ear wire, I do want to make sure that, you know, I have a front and a back. So this is the front because the opening to all of my simple loops is on this side. So it's just a detail in connecting, but it just, you know, makes the finished piece all the more better. Is that correct? All the more better? More better? I don't know. <laughs> And just get this closed really well. I want to be really careful with these uh, French ear wires because they're gold plated. But um, if you break this little loop off, you're done. It's not usable. There we go. So the first part is finished. It looks great. And now same thing. And you could open your simple loops, but I don't want to... Uh, because of the seed beads on that component, I just found it easier to open the chain. But if you don't have a chain where the links can do this, you know, you can open your loops here. So I'm gonna attach my chain to each loop. And I did the odd number, the seven links, so that the very middle one will accommodate my final dangle. Okay, it's looking good. And now for my final drop, as I said, I had these in my stash, these little splayed end head pins, and I just created a little, um, you know, just a tiny little drop. And I have to show you guys this. I just got this set of cone shaped bead caps and I absolutely love them. Let me just pause and show you. 
it was like $7.99 for this entire box of cone shaped bead caps and there were like three or four finishes they came in silver and copper and antique bronze and I'm going to go back and get some more but there's all sizes in here from like this one that looks like a bell to a more traditional cone end cap that's embossed this one looked like has like a, a flared out cap it so it kind of looks like a flower um, and then these little tiny ones I mean there were several really small little 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 tiny ones for just adding the perfect embellishment look at this one it's like a little um like a little tulip flower I mean they're just absolutely gorgeous so it was not an expensive set I just it's so it's just so beautiful and it just adds so much to a design um, they are just fashion jewelry so I will use my permalac coating when I'm all done just to make sure that they stay shiny like that but it is absolutely stunning so now the other thing to pay attention to if you have a head pin like this where you want this to be facing forward is your loop has to be going in the opposite direction of the flat part of the head pin so that your drop has that flat part you know showing and facing forward so again I'm gonna do the one step looper and I know that my one step looper makes the loops going up so I'm gonna hold it that way put my head pin through the guide hole of the one step looper gently close it I can see that my loop is going to go this way and my my splayed part of my head pin is going to be facing forward and then just close the tool and make that loop same thing pull it down and now here if you did get it offset a little bit you know it's the same thing you can use your pliers it's perfect but I have this beautiful little component and now I can open this and with the opening facing the back I'm keeping all these little details of connecting and I'm just going to grab that very middle link if I can might need to go back and open this a little tiny bit more that should do it middle link and just get that closed really really well because you don't want your drop to slip off your chain <laughs> but I even thought about in this design I as I was connecting the first earring I even thought how pretty it would be to do a longer length of gold chain to keep the copper and gold showing um, or no drop at all I just love this design it is so beautiful and I mean it's a little bit bigger of an earring that I than I normally wear but I think it's so stunning I will definitely <laughs> be wearing these so I will put some pictures up at the end of the video so you can have a really good look and I thank you so much for watching do not forget to check the description box of this video because I put links to all of my tools anything I can link this beautiful little collection of cone end caps if you like that uh, the gold filled diamond cut um, jump rings I lost the word for them they um, can be linked in the description box um, anything that I haven't had in my stash for a million years and I know where I got it I will link it for you guys but also dollar bead club ha I have a discount code for them I will put links in the description box and you know don't forget that if you don't want another monthly box uh, or or bag that you can pay an annual fee and still be a member of Dollar Bead Club and shop the website for a dollar going back to getting any of these strands for a dollar if you want more so I really love that about this company as I said it was one of my very first subscription boxes many years ago before I even was on YouTube and so I've loved it for a long time and so I just thank you so much for watching I hope you're all safe and well and having fun on your beading mats child jewelry making friends.